I will be preaching from uh, Romans, that's Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. It's our second lesson. When I was a kid, I had done something that my mother really didn't like. I don't quite remember what it was. But I do remember what I said because it was the exact wrong thing to say. I said, you can't judge me. Oh, God. <laughs> Not only was I dead wrong about that statement, she could, in fact, judge me, but whatever I had done, it was worthy of being judged of. And I, I knew how much I had crossed the line, right? You know, as a kid, you kind of know this. You know that you've really crossed the line at some point. So what I really remember is that after having said that and having messed up, I, I kept trying to do things in order to make it better, right? Do more chores, all that kind of stuff. And I remember at one point my mom said, Dave, it doesn't work that way. Paul is writing to this congregation in Rome and he's introducing his theology in this letter. So we start off with this thundering declaration in verse 1, which we should all hear. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Like most grace-filled statements in the Bible, we can kind of take them two ways. You can kind of take this in the way I did as a kid, right? You can't judge me. There is no condemnation. It's not quite what Paul means, though. The other way to hear it is the way I think St. Paul means us to hear it. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his, son, his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Now there's like eight commas in that, those four verses, because it's St. Paul. But here's what he's getting at, and here's the really important point. Human beings love to try and earn forgiveness by doing something, right? We try and earn our forgiveness, and we try and earn our worthiness, and we try and earn our value by accomplishing something. So when we mess up, kind of like me as a kid, it's perfectly natural for us to want to do something, to keep doing more and more and more. Of course, the trick there is that, one, that never works, right? It doesn't actually work that way. I could have done as many chores as I wanted. My mom was still angry at me. I, it doesn't work that way in life in general, right? And more so, all that does is create this incredible pressure on us that we can't ever live up to. It's the drive to be perfect. It's the drive to accomplish more and more. It's the drive to just sign up for one more thing. If I do this one more thing, then everything will be all right. That's how our human brains work. If I sign up for one more activity, if I get one more self-help book, it'll all work out fine. But the point St. Paul is trying to make is that that doesn't actually work. We can't actually do enough to earn our value. We can't actually do enough to earn forgiveness. That's not how it works. And so St. Paul says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because God has decided to accomplish what we could not. We could not earn our forgiveness, and so God has given it to us freely in Jesus Christ. We could not earn our value, and so God bestows it 
upon us freely in our baptisms. Here's the trick about a baptism. If you've ever noticed one, notice the baby's not doing much besides trying to wriggle out of my arms and crying a little bit when it gets cold water splashed on his head. Sorry. But the baby's not doing much. They don't have much to do with the whole thing, but that's exactly how God's grace works. This value and this love is bestowed on this child freely. Nothing you have to do. God has done what we could not. That is good news. It is good news for many people in this room, I think. It's good news if you're an addict, because it means God is bestowing on you what you could not. It's good news if you're sick and you're suffering, because it means God has bestowed on you what the doctors and the medicine cannot. Love and grace. And freedom from death itself. It's good news for those of you who are toiling away under some secret shame that you just can't let go and wakes you up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night to haunt you. You can't let it go, but God has bestowed love and value on you and has done what you could not. And it's good news for those of you who keep adding one more task, yet one more thing to get done in hopes that that will give you your value The hard truth is that it won't. It won't give you any more value, but the good news is God has given you all the value and the love you need in this world. God has done for you what you could not. My mom obviously eventually forgave me. I talked to her frequently. She still loves me. This is good. but all my attempts to try and earn forgiveness were rather silly. And none of it worked very well. So if you get nothing else from this sermon, please get this. God has done what we could not. And now there is no condemnation for those of us in Christ Jesus. Amen.